What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And y'all know I love talking about financial wellness and things that we can do to help you out. And now we have something really special uh, for you guys today. What we're going to talk about, we have Lindsay C. Smith and Shaquana Brooks here. Hello. Hello. And we're going to be talking about insurance, life insurance, and also accounting, your taxes, different strategies you can use. And you ladies actually are working in conjunction in conjunction with each other. Yeah. Yes. So what is it that you're offering? So you want to start? I'll do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Lindsay and I decided to put the pieces together for everyone. There's always so much communication about taxes and wealth and building a legacy and trust and all of these different things, right? So you have, when you're thinking about wealth, you're thinking about, okay, I'm, I, I see this person, she or he does taxes. Mm -hmm. this, Lindsay does insurance. This person is talking to me about trust. Right. This person is a financial advisor. Wait, stop. How does How do it all it together? come together? And so Lindsay and I thought that it would be good for us to have the conversation together versus having the conversation separately because the reality is when people are getting introduced to all of this information, they're still like, okay, this information is great, but how do I execute it? Who are the players that's going to actually put it together for me? And so that's what Lindsay and I are pretty much doing, just trying to help people get to, get to their future financial self, mm -hmm. but being able to connect the dots for them. And definitely also to make it simple for them, because I think yes. it, it's overwhelming. When you hear all these different pieces and you're yes. trying to put them together, you're like, where do I start? I don't know where to start. So we're laying it out so that you know exactly what piece you got to do first, what's the order, how do you finish, how do you execute, who do we use. So I think we're going to bring that to the forefront so that it can be easier for people to actually execute. Well, let's do a version of that today because I know you have free webinars every Thursday this month. Yes. That's why I wanted to make sure I got y'all yes. up here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, nice and early. Well, before the month ends because yes. I, I heard about it, you know, yes. kind of into February, but I wanted to make sure that at least people can catch you know, can catch this. Yeah. Because we have an extra day. Still time. We yes. have an extra day this month, too. Yes. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I do want to talk about where to start because even for myself, somebody who, you know, I, I think relatively I, I do have knowledge about finances. And one thing that I did, and I did this maybe like, I don't know, six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. I got life insurance for the first time. And that was something that I never had, but it was also confusing for me because there are so many different types of life insurance exactly. yes. that you can get. So maybe you can break that down for us. Absolutely. I, the first thing about life insurance is I think a lot of people, especially in our community, we stay away from it because we don't understand it. It goes over our head. And like you said, the types, knowing what type do I need, and even to know that it's not just death insurance, it's life insurance. You can actually utilize it while you're alive. And three of the biggest strategies that I like to use are one to create that tax-free retirement income out of it mm -hmm. using that permanent coverage that universal life that whole life that builds cash value that allows you to create an income over time just think for all the entrepreneurs and all people who are have a w-2 job that might not have a pension they may need a supplemental retirement and why not have one that can be tax-free right. so life insurance does that for you but people don't realize that and you can tap into that money Absolutely. also okay so you're able to actually take an income out of out of the life insurance tax free so that you can have a retirement income. And then another opportunity, you invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. People can use it to invest in real estate. If you purchase a universal life or a whole life permanent policy, you can actually use the money. And this is something Shaquana did. I did. Instead of using the money from the bank, instead of using hard money, mm -hmm. you actually can borrow money from your policy, use it. Let's say you were doing a flip. Mm -hmm. And so now you'll take this money, you'll pay for the down payment, you'll be able to do your flip. If you need renovations, you could take the money from your policy. And now you don't have to pay like a regular hard money. You got to pay it back every month. You can pay it back when the deal is over. Usually in a real estate deal, they say, oh, it's going to take three months. And it's six it months. It does not, yeah. So this is a <laughs> <Three> perfect. <years. laughs> right, three years. Exactly. <laughs> so this is a way that people can utilize the life insurance to further their net worth. What happens if you don't pay it back? So if you don't pay it back, when you pass away, the money comes off the death benefit. Okay. So you. That's so you the, have until you die to pay it back? Absolutely. Wow, so, I didn't know. But this is the thing. <laughs> if you were to, to pay it back, you can keep reusing it. Mm -hmm. And you can use it, and it grows while you have the money out. 
Okay. So the money is growing while you have the money out. Which it's like your own personal ha- bank. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the concepts people always talk about, becoming your own bank, infinite banking. So this is something that you can utilize. And the last thing is funding your business. Think about a lot of small businesses. The banks are not giving you money for that. You decide you want to start selling here. The bank is not about to give you a $100,000 loan. But imagine you have the policy. I had a client who wanted to start a trucking business. He decided, he was like, hey, Lindsay, where can I get this money from? The bank won't give me the money. I'm like, you have the money in your policy. He borrowed the money. He brought a truck. After the truck was making money, he paid it back. He brought another truck. Mm -hmm. So these are some things that I think if we're able to teach people how to use life insurance, how to understand it, what types to get, then they're going to be able to push forward in their financial goals. See, I'm just thinking about how I'm rehabbing this brownstone and I'm running out of money. I'm like, maybe I need to t- tap Absolutely. into my that life insurance to me. policy. I was renovating my per- my primary residence and they told me it was going to be one amount and it was a total different yeah. amount and I tapped in. Get ready in. for that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, this is so important. So I had no idea. I always thought about life insurance from the aspect of Death, right? I want to make sure that nobody has to do a fish fry for me. No, <laughs> I don't no want go anybody me. Like, Hold fish on. fries. No, no fish. <laughs> Listen, I like a fish fry for a card game, not to raise money for a funeral, <laughs> right? So I literally was like, okay, I have to make sure that I don't have children, but I'm like, no one can. Yeah, neither do I. And people t- used to tell me you don't need life insurance because, so, if you don't have children, but that's so untrue. It's so, that's untrue. so untrue. So I literally, um, you know, I'm a business owner, so I. I said, you know what, Lindsay, I need to be able to utilize life insurance. And this is after her having the conversation with me, because when I thought I was just like, all right, I just don't want nobody to have to do, you know, raise no money, no GoFundMe's, none of that stuff if something were to happen to me. So she's like, you can literally use life insurance to um, have a tax free retirement. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm an accountant, so I'm like tax free. I'm trying to (laughs) avoid taxes at all costs. So I um, I created an IUL, got an IUL. And I've been paying into it. And I was presented with a real estate opportunity. And it was an option of, do I go to the bank? Do I pull down on a line of credit? Mm -hmm. What do I do? And Lindsay's like, girl, (laughs) tap into this life insurance. Tap into that policy. policy." And I literally, I needed $30,000 for the investment. I withdrew the $30,000 from my policy, gave them the $30,000, and I... I only had taken money from my 401k before when Mm -hmm. I was an employee that you have to pay back. Right. So I'm like, well, when do I have to pay pay it back? back? And how? They're like, well, you don't technically have to pay it back. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have to pay it back. And there's no time frame on when you when you have to pay it back. I was like, oh, this is. Yeah. See, things people don't know. That's (laughs) And you are, like you said, Shaquana, a CPA. Yes. And that's important right now, too, because. Ooh, ta- I feel like tax season is always upon us, <laughs> no matter what. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm complaining <laughs> for it. Tax season, especially when you get to that space where you're owing money. So if you're a business owner, investor. I'm in that space. And you're in that space, <laughs> right? So tax season <laughs> tax season is always here. And I, I, I say all the time, like, there's definitely you as a business owner. You're like, okay, right now, for you, you're not so happy, right? People who are getting refunds, mm-hmm. they're like, it's refunds. They can't wait. They're they can't wait. Right? Right? They right. They're going to the last you're minute. You're like, I oh, want an extension. To... Yeah, I get an extension. extension. Every year. I got to stop. Okay. Yes. Every year. Give me an extension. So... The thing with now, this is technically tax, tax paying season, mm-hmm. right? That April 15th deadline is really the IRS saying, if you don't pay us by this time, by we'll April 15th, you, penalties, you will charge fees. you interest and mm-hmm. penalties, right? So this is technically tax paying season. The rest of the year is what we call tax planning season. That's a time when you're supposed to be strategizing, meeting with your accountants, really figuring out like, what can I do to lower my tax liability? And I tell people this all the time. We cannot, and we have to get out of the mindset of operating from January through April and only thinking about taxes January through April. Right. Because it does not, you have to think about it all year. And that was the reason why I even started my company because I, my, I grew up small business. My dad owns restaurants throughout Brooklyn. And so I seen what small business was when I went corporate I seen how corporate approach taxes. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, there's a huge difference between how corporations are approaching taxes and how 
small business and individuals are approaching taxes. And it's not because of money. Most people are like, oh, it's because of their corporation. They have so much money. No, it's a, their mindset right. around taxes. Mm -hmm. They're looking at taxes mm -hmm. all year round. How can we lower this tax liability? What business can we start? What investments can we so buy? So the best thing to do in order to lower your tax liability is to start a business or for an individual, like say you're not a business owner mm -hmm. and you get a, a salary and you're like, all right, how can I make sure I maximize mm -hmm. my return? What what types of things can people do? Absolutely. So I am not going to sit here and ever say there's a ton of options for business. I mean, for um, W-2 employees, mm -hmm. because there's not. The reality is the government incentivize business owners and investors. And they do that because business owners and investors stimulate the economy. They we are basically doing something that they need us to do. They don't have enough resources to house everyone, to provide all of the resources. So what they do is they give us tax breaks, mm -hmm. right? Because we they are, need us to do that. They need yeah. us to do those things. So if you are a W-2 employee, what I always suggest is that hobby that you're doing for free that everyone's calling your phone for you need to start charging for it. Right. Because under the IRS code, your business just needs, you need to bring in some sort of income. In, or it just needs to be $1. Mm -hmm. You need to bring in $1 <laughs> in order to start. Start those small businesses. To, yes, to start that business, to start that hobby. Um, uh, so what I was saying was you only need to bring in $1 in order to start writing off these expenses, right? So as an example, I always tell people, being a W-2 employee, you make your money, your tax, and you have to pay your bills last. Right. As a business owner and investor, you get your money, you pay your bills, and then you pay taxes on what's left. And there's power in that, right? There's so much power in that. So what we have to do is shift our mindset. So if you're a W-2 employee, now you start that hobby, you now turn it into a business, mm -hmm. guess what? Your rent, you can now write a portion of your rent off. That vehicle that you're driving, you can now write that off. Right. You can pay your children, right? So everyone's you always work like, from home. <laughs> you can you work know, from home. You can work So part of your mortgage or rent, yep, you can, can write be part of that off. off. Mm -hmm. Your utilities, your insurance, your property taxes, all these things that technically you have to figure out how you're going to pay with after-tax dollars, you can then say, okay, I'm going to start this business. I'm going to now be able to write off all of my major expenses, right? I always say your kid, your car, <laughs> your home. Those are most likely your three major expenses. People are always also saying now food, right? They're like food well, is we added on the electric there. car write-offs. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we'll talk about the electric car write-off. That's that's something that Lindsay took advantage I love, of. I decided okay, to go talk about that. One. You, so you got an electric vehicle. So I just got one in December, and I had been debating on it. And I spoke to Shaquana, and I was like, listen, they're giving 7500 I need that tax credit. So basically, if you purchase a electric vehicle, you can get 7500 But What if it's hybrid? No. No? no. Okay. It's, okay. And it, has to be, and it has to be new, too, because people were asking yeah, that people question did in the ask, webinar yes. yesterday. Um, yeah, it has to be new, So because otherwise somebody already got the tax credit. Mm -hmm. And so basically, okay. when I purchased the car, they gave me an option to receive a check for $7,500, or I could take it off the price of the car and get my payments down. I was like, I'll go ahead and take that right now. Right. Right. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's write that up right now. That's really good because originally they were not taking it off the value of the vehicle. So basically, just to give backstory, but you guys see how how Lindsay is just talking so so fluently <laughs> about this tax credit. She's not ready she's for like, an electric. <laughs> she's not ready for electric car. I don't yet. know. She's I'm not ready. I went to. But it's hard because it's hard. of you know having to be prepared to like. Plug in and you charge. Have to plug in. Honestly, I feel like if you don't have a house that has the plug in, don't set yourself up. Because yeah, that's New the York, issue. Or a have... place right near you, a garage or some place where you can do that. That's until because there's going to be a lot of money in places that can install those charge, charging yeah. stations. I'm just not there yet. I'm. I look at um, electric vehicles like an iPhone. Like I'm not trying to go sit down and wait for my iPhone to charge. You don't have an iPhone? <laughs> no, I do have an I iPhone, but I. <laughs> I am team iPhone, but that's how I look at electric vehicles. I'm like, you want me to sit here and charge this? No, right, I'm I can't like, can do I that. trust a CPA that doesn't have an iPhone? Right. <laughs> Shaquana got two, right? I have an iPhone. Trying. I have, have iPhones. Okay, so you can trust me, okay? iPhone. Now, so yeah. let's talk about these free webinars. So what type of information will people get and how can they even sign up? 
Okay, so basically there are four different webinars. Actually, we're doing eight because we have... Well, four, technically. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're doing but, four. And can you see it after it's... All these questions. Can you see it after it's done, right? And then um, how can people sign up? And then what are we talking about? You want me to do that? You okay. go ahead and do that. <laughs> 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 All right, so we are doing four webinars. At this point, we've already done one one more tomorrow. So mm -hmm. um, in terms of the, when are we doing them? We're doing them every Thursday. In terms of replays, replays are not available. So if you are seeing this, make sure that you go and you register. Um, you will be able to um, just join for free. In terms of the things that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about tax strategies. So t um, I'll be, of course, giving... Um, com I'll be giving education on tax strategies, on how you can live tax free, what you can implement, because people aren't thinking about things from a tax free perspective, right? How you're writing off your travel, how you're writing off them kids, how you're writing off that vehicle, <laughs> your rent and everything else, right? How people are utilizing real estate so that way they are living tax free. Real estate is the ultimate tax deduction, mm -hmm. by the way. Ooh. It's the Ooh. ultimate. Yes. <laughs> Aren't you happy about it? It came through and helped me a lot. Yes, it comes it has. through. It has. And then. Even um, when you think about depreciation, right? Depreciation is like That's my, my favorite, favorite, right? Yes, Isn't that's it? That's me favorite. every year. I'm like, how much are we going to take off this year? Yes. Yeah, because there's a lot of things we don't best. take advantage of. If mm -hmm. you are a homeowner, there are so many things that you can do mm -hmm. that um, yes. you may not even know, mm -hmm. you know, that's possible. So Absolutely. Absolutely. I love depreciation. That is my favorite. Favorite, favorite tax deduction, whether it's depreciating your home or your vehicle or your laptop or your iPhone. And it's people amazing. don't realize the small your man. things that you <laughs> can write on. You <laughs> cannot depreciate anybody. your man. <laughs> well, if it's considered an asset, then maybe. I mean, if you spend your money, I'm wondering. He used to do that. <laughs> Yes, he's appreciating. Okay, <laughs> so we're all we'll also be talking about. So Lindsay will be talking about. Right. Come on, Lindsay. So I'm gonna, yeah. So about. I'll be talking about insurance, but I'm mm -hmm. gonna give the strategies of how you can use it while you're alive. So sh showing the strategy of creating your own bank, infinite banking. Also, I'll be talking about the types of policies, how you know what type works for you and yeah. your family, because that's a big... That's confusing. It is. You know, some people want to make sure they can at least just cover the cost of their funeral when they... And if you wait till you get older, it is a lot more expensive, right? It is. But this is the thing. It's not too late, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, I'm 50. I don't know if, it, if I can still get it. You absolutely can. I've written policies for people who are 80. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to think just because they're 50, they can't get it. There are options. I think one of the biggest issues with insurance, and this is the thing that that I also speak about in the webinar is that you people are not connected to insurance because they haven't been left insurance before. Okay. So people don't see the value in spending the money. So even if somebody's willing to go buy that Chanel bag for thirteen thousand dollars, they're not willing to spend thirteen thousand dollars a year on insurance. Yeah. Even if they had yeah, it, right? Because I could walk out the store with the Chanel bag. The value is on my shoulder. It, with the life insurance, it's something down the line. People don't really see it. And so then they, they really haven't been able to connect spending the money to the insurance. And so that's a huge issue. And the other part to it is I also think that with the insurance, because people don't understand what type to get, people are not really sure if it's too expensive or not. They don't know. Well, that's that's for wealthy people. I've heard people say that. Like, it's not for us. It's for wealthy people. But they don't understand. You could get a policy for $20. And then the last thing is people think it's a scam. Mm -hmm. And that's because they've had family members who have had a policy that it didn't pay out. But right. why? Because they didn't know the type. It might have been a term that ended 10 years ago. And they're like, well, why didn't it pay out? Well, it ended. And that's the thing with term insurance is mm -hmm. that if nothing happens and it's over, it's just over. It's over. Yeah. But people have to look at term and say to themselves, you pay your car insurance to protect if you get into an accident. Mm -hmm. You pay your home insurance to protect if there's a fire or a leak or and whatever. And you don't want something to happen. You don't want anything to happen, but in life insurance, you're not willing to protect your human capital. You're not willing to say, I'm the person bringing in the money, and I want to protect my kids, my spouse, my family from having to have financial distress when yeah. I die. Yeah, to Shaquana's point, we don't want to do a fish fry. Right. Or, you know, that's the worst mm -hmm. feeling. And I also um, think that, mm -hmm. yes, it would be the best thing in the world if, you know, we're all going to go one day, but to know that family doesn't have to worry about fighting over 
who's paying for what and have that as an additional stress. Mm-hmm. And it happens. You see it in the entertainment mm-hmm. business all, all the, the time. time. And they have the money to pay for insurance, but nobody said anything to them. Their families after that are in financial distress because they were the one breadwinner. Right. And this happens all the time. I read something on Limmer. That's where they do all of the analytics for life insurance. And they basically said that 57% of America has insurance, but they're usually underinsured or they don't have the right type of insurance that's going to last. And so basically that's letting us know there's millions of people without insurance. And you can turn your term insurance into whole life or universal life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can convert it. People don't know that either. Okay. See, look at me learning. (laughs) Look at you. You're learning. And that is a process for me always. Mm -hmm. I wanted to also mention your point where you talked about, you know, just people dying and family not knowing exactly what to do or, you know, who, who like actually what the person had going on. And so that's why in the webinars, we're also going to bring in someone that's going to talk about trust yes. because that's so important because a lot of times you, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're moving, you're shaking, you're doing what you're doing and you're like, okay, I want to invest here. I want to do this. I have a building here. I have a home here. But a lot of times the conversation is leave a legacy. Don't leave grandma's house. I mean, don't sell grandma's house, but there's no insurance. There's nothing in place. There's no trust. There's no insurance. There's nothing. What if this person can't afford grandma's monthly payment? Right. Mm-hmm. Or what if or they the can't afford the taxes, taxes mm-hmm. or the maintenance? Mm-hmm. And that's how grandma's house gets sold. Right. And so a lot of times, you know, just kind of bringing the conversation together, we're like, okay, we need to give them access to the information of a trust what does it really mean yeah. mm-hmm. because there's so mm-hmm. much conversation about it but it's like what does it mean and how can I take the insurance and put it under trust and well okay so what if I put all these assets and what type in of trust, a trust? To get? yes and if I put all this all these assets underneath this trust then what does it mean in terms of taxes right what does it all mean because there is death tax death mm-hmm. tax is real <laughs> and okay you and people you think <laughs> if I, I don't gotta pay these bills because when I die when I who die, cares no. but somebody gotta pay somebody's those bills somebody's gonna pay them and, and I they, actually just connected it with somebody to, to start working on my trust because I don't yeah. have my properties or anything and you know you just think I'm going to leave this to but you do want to put your um, assets into a trust because if I leave my house and now you have to pay tax on receiving that that tax can be so much that you can't afford that to pay the tax yeah. or, yep, or the property taxes so that's so important mm-hmm. and another um, concept I mean another topic that we're going to talk about is just funding like using other people's money mm-hmm. I tell people all the time it's so funny so before I started my own company I worked at one of the top accounting firms in a real estate fund and they literally raised 265 million dollars that's a lot of money you know what they did? They went and leveraged that $265 million that they raised, and they went out, and they got a line of credit for another $265 million. And they tapped into the line of credit before they ever tapped into the capital that they raised. And we have to structure our lives like that as well. If we have, like, for instance, that $30,000, I could have taken that out of my bank account. But guess what? That would have been my money once right. it's gone, poof. Yeah. <laughs> never, right. never to return. Right. right? Never to return. <laughs> but with me utilizing other people's money, the insurance, you know, the insurance policy, I was able to keep my money. So now I can do something else with that. Right. And now my investment is now working. And also the other side to that is sometimes the investments don't go the way we want them to go. Yeah. And so it's and always those, a risk. And let's yes. make sure we understand. Yes. Right. There is no, if somebody tells you this is a sure fire. We investment know not. that is not there's yep. no such thing there's right. no such thing at all and it's, so that's important that you use the insurance money because mm-hmm. now if things don't go the way they're supposed to the time frame isn't the same the the payback isn't the same now she doesn't have to worry about she lost the money in her bank account she has the money in her insurance her insurance will continue to make money mm-hmm. so it's okay if she ended up saying you know what I'm not going to pay that back because I didn't make the money I was supposed to make right. so that's why you want to leverage money that's or why you'll you be wanna... like I pay it back when I get it I'll exactly pay some it back. of it yep. here some of it there yeah. I'll exactly. pay it back when I get it and I think that that's so important so just realizing other people's money whether it's insurance whether it's line of credits whether it's credit cards like understanding how this all works and really being able to utilize it effectively and responsibly is so important. So pretty much throughout all of these free webinars, our goal is to just bring it to just bring it all together for everyone. So that way it's not like 
so many disconnected topics. Mm-hmm. That's great. And anything <laughs> that people need to dive deeper into, then they can go and, pers- you know, there's certain things that you might be like, I know this, but I have to work on this. Mm-hmm. And that's absolutely. fine. Like, all of us are a work in progress. Everyone, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and I believe we're giving out a free... Yes, yes, yes. So we're Lindsay, giving out our books for free. We okay. are giving out our books for free. Y'all are just like... <laughs> Listen, <laughs> okay, I love it. I brought you one, too, oh, by the way. Yes. Black yes. History Month. Yes. 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 We're making yes. sure that we are focused on some positive, amazing amazing yes, things that will make a difference you. in our lives but also in our communities and also for the future. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So if you guys want our book, just text 41372. Text the word ye, so Y-E-E. Hey, I'm yes. special. Thank yes. you. Yes, we, we made it special one for, me, one for, for you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, we made it special for you. So again, 41372, text the word ye. And you will receive my book, which is 300 plus tax deductions, because the number one question I'm always asked is, what can I write off? So you get 300 things plus that you can write off. And Lindsay? And you get my book, Creating Wealth Through Life Insurance. And it's simplified so that you can understand life insurance so that you don't have to worry about feeling like it's over your head. Okay. Well, I love it. Well, Lindsay C. Smith, Shaquana Briggs, thank you all so much. What are your social media handles so people can follow both of you as well? Okay, so mine is Lindsay Smith, the agent, mm-hmm. and my name is spelled L I N D S A Y because okay. you know you can spell with a E. <laughs> <laughs> my name on social media is Miss Business 101, so that's M S dot Business 101. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I think this was really insightful. And I really am saying, y'all better go and sign up for this absolutely free webinar, but also make sure you get your free book. All right. Yes. (laughs) What's the number one more time? Four. Hold on. I I need you to say that. I had it in my head. I put it right on the screen. It's 41372. Text Yee to 41372. There we go. All right. (laughs) Thank you. It's way up with Angela Yee. 